There, I was uh, doing a little preliminary work for my uh, glass revolution uh, project for this summer. So uh, I developed a sun tracking uh, functionality uh, based on this pickaxe chip. I, uh, I kind of overreached or outdone myself uh, because I was thinking about ser servo functionality. But uh, it's quite useful. It's basically a, uh, well, a so solar tracker uh, uh, functionality that's very easy to, uh, to use. Uh, these chips are extremely versatile in my opinion. They do serial output and input. They do I2C, uh, analog to digital conversion, touch sensitivity, um, pulse width modulation. All these functions are included in these chips. Uh, you do have, if you take a small one like this, uh, a restriction with your input and output. So, so I, I was basically trying to figure out whether you could do time-based servo uh, control uh, with this this one and I've not I've yet to figure out how that would work I don't think it has enough pins for that enough inputs and outputs but for what I'm uh, trying to uh, or what I built today it's actually working uh, uh, this chip is uh, is more than uh, uh, able to do the job here you can see the schematic uh, what I want to do is simply detect the direction of the sun so I have my uh, one axis solar panel uh, here on the top I have a photo detector looks uh, like this it has two uh, LDRs resistors these are classical uh, components that, that have been around for a long long time that basically were part of the first electronics kits that, uh, that, that I only got, uh, that ever got my hands on uh, these are two resistors they, have, uh, they are equal photo resistors and, uh, and if one gets more light than the other, then the potential in the middle shifts. So if this one has less resistance than that one, then the potential shifts to this side, to the side of the ground, so to the zero. And if this one has less resistance than that one, then the potential shifts towards the supply voltage. Uh, the chip, uh, the 8M2 chip, has analog to digital conversion, which means that it simply puts out a number which tells you exactly where in the range between the supply voltage and the ground voltage you are uh, with, your, with your potential that you're offering it. So that makes a very simple circuit. You have these two resistors, you can put another resistor in this connection, but that won't, in, that won't uh, influence the potential at this end. And the chip will see uh, well, uh, uh, a, a value between uh, let's say 0 and 1023 and if these two are balanced because you are exactly uh, towards the sun then the value will be 512 so you could write a little program saying well if this is above 512 then we put out a binary signal for the engine controller for the motor controller to turn it to the right uh, and if it's below 512 we turn it to the left that all depends on how you mount all these things so the abs absolute relationship between the value and, and, and the direction is, is not, uh, you know, don't kill me for, uh, for, for, for being wrong about that, but it's about the idea. You, but you only need this half of the, of the chip to do that. Uh, I ended up making this half of the chip actually by accident because I thought, well, you need to tune this to a, a set value and that's not necessary. But this ends up to be useful. I used here a linear rotating uh, resistor looks a little bit like this uh, and I, what it allows me to do is to set the value at which uh, the motor will switch direction uh, and that means that if you have this uh, panel uh, and you have the detector mounted uh, then there might be an imbalance uh, still a little bit between these resistors and you can uh, so the value that ends up here is not 512 but 480 or something like that uh, that means that you, uh, well, with this resistor you can simply say, okay, we'll turn it a little bit until the motor stops turning, if the panel is oriented towards the sun correctly, and from that point on, the, this will work uh, exactly as it was, as it used to, uh, with it, as I described before. Uh, so you can uh, basically uh, make it, set it to a certain, uh, well, uh, you can adapt it to, uh, to work properly. You still have a number of uh, uh, pins, two pins left, which is nice. So you can have a C3 which which you can detect the endpoints. Uh, and of course, you know, you could say, well, 
if you reach the end point here uh, on the right side uh, then we're, let's say where it ends up at the end of the afternoon then you do a whole different program and you run it all the way back so you basically control the motor to run the whole thing panel back to the starting point which is uh, another switch which is C5 and if it detects C5 then it waits uh, until morning <laughs> I'm not sure yet how that works but uh, uh, by that time it will be pretty dark actually uh, this thing has a internal clock so as long as it gets power it can count seconds and you can uh, you can so you can move this back and make it count for eight hours or something like that that won't be very precise but you can simply let it sleep for for eight hours which makes it consume, consume very little power and then after eight hours it will switch on and try to uh, to do this whole routine uh, on the breadboard let's say on the breadboard it looks like this uh, it's very little part so you have the pickaxe chip these are two uh, LEDs, leds that that show me what the motor control was so one switch is on and if you let's say move either the set point or or the light sensor then the other switch is on and uh, uh, there's some resistors uh, you need a power supply you could use a solar panel for that actually you could also use a solar panel to drive the motor and this is the code where you basically read the two analog to digital conversion inputs from the set uh, from the let's say the setting uh, resistor and the photo resistor pair uh, you compare them and if uh, one is bigger than the other then you start uh, moving to the right either to the or to the left and this is simply uh, you you take uh, the input say three you make a little uh, read switch or a, a, a very light switch that you put into this input and when it uh, gets triggered you switch off everything you switch off the engine so when it runs into this end point uh, and it switches on C3 then uh, both uh, the values of the motor signal go, go low this is a very basic implementation of course <coughs> what I talked about is a little bit more complicated if you talk about parts for this uh, these chips are about uh, two bucks or three bucks this is about four uh, bucks uh, these things are uh, these LDRs here are like a few cents so actually this is not very uh, well the, the, I guess motor controllers are about 10 euros that's a very expensive one you need other stuff of course to make a whole, uh, a whole device but well I guess this could be uh, a very easy way to get your own solar tracker um, and that's about it uh, I, I could offer uh, programming these uh, I'll, I'll try to build a, uh, a, a fully programmed one, one and demo it but that requires a lot of time I'm actually looking for uh, using uh, the clock uh, so because of course this one this setup has a sensitivity to uh, clouds and can show hysteresis which is that it doesn't really know which way it has to move and it moves back and forth um, uh, all that type of phenomena can occur but um, I think to do a true servo type tracking with uh, a number of other functions you have to start with the, the PICX 1.4 M2 and M2 at least I have one of those as well so I guess that will be my, my next presentation and uh, I'll try to get a little video of, uh, of this uh, in action Thanks for listening.